So will sweet new wheels turn an 890 into a dirt bike? Let's find out. I came up to the spot uh, about a month and change ago with the stock wheels and tires, and it was way better than I expected. That said, I didn't have any traction when it was like hard pack, but wet, just straight snot. So I asked up on my Instagram, like, hey guys, what are good off-road tires? I started Googling it, red threads on ADV rider, and everyone said, go narrower on your rims. Everyone said stock rims are made of finely aged cheese. I don't love the TKC 80s to come stock with. So I talked to W, got a little bit of a discount, but bought myself a set of W built wheels from California. With the new wheels, be narrower, stronger, fewer flat tires. I'm also gonna run inner tubes instead of tubeless. Let's crack this all open and see what we got. Oh man, look at that. Dang. Okay, the rear. Tiny little front, big old burly rear. Uh, they're Han hubs with Excel Takasago rims. Uh, 1.85 in front and 2.5 in back. And then everyone said get the Motaz Rousey Tractionator tires. Cool. Wow. I did hear this front tire is sketchy on the highway. So last night I put everything on here. So I got the wheels on the 890 last night. I'm gonna go try them out in some trails today. Um, yeah, install is pretty simple. I just went and got some rim locks down at Cycle Gear or whatever and used Gorilla Tape for rim tape. I've had better luck with Gorilla Tape than actual rubber rim strips over the years, oddly enough. And then those Motaz Rousey Tractionator tires, they install really easily. Like it was, like it was probably 20 minutes at maybe 10 minutes per tire. Like it was quick and easy. I haven't done a dirt tire in years, but it felt like a dirt tire, which is insane. Pretty easy install for the W's. I think um, I've got my buddy Riley coming over. We're gonna head up to some trails and see how these things do compared to the old street tires, which were worn out. So I am very optimistic. I'm a little low on fuel, so I don't wanna top it off or anything, but I just threw two gallons in the jug, filling up with a jerry can taking my bike to the trails in the back of the van. This is dirt biker stuff right here, not ADV. That went smooth. And uh, initial sample is like, hey, that's awesome. I am like an intermediate level dirt biker at best. I would like race B-class hair scrambles and all that. So like B is intermediate, expert A, beginner would be C. So intermediate. Uh, let's go hit the trails. Riley's cruising along. He'll get a few shots for us and we'll see what happens. Okay, let's go ride. Enough chit chat. I came up here uh, a few weeks ago in like November or something, a month and a half ago. And I uh, figured, you know what? I'm gonna do afternoon on my Ripmo V2S and I'm gonna do morning on my KTM 890R. Do like a dual sport day. Now these trails are like, there's some pretty gnarly stuff. I didn't ride that. I went and rode like the beginner and the intermediate level trails because I didn't want to get in over my head. I was blown away at how well this street bike did on real dirt bike trails. And before we get into the whole dirt bike comparison, let's back up a little bit. I've ridden this thing, you know, on like 500 mile tours around the Olympic Peninsula. I would not hesitate riding this down to California to visit Santa Cruz. I wouldn't mind riding this thing to Arizona from Washington. I could ride it to Florida. Like this is the kind of motorcycle you can legit do multi thousand mile tours on. This is a street bike. I got it to do 80 on the interstate with. Now that said, I just rode actual dirt bike trails on this bike. How much of that is the wheels changing things up? How much of it is how good of a bike this is? Yes, I don't know, but came back out here to these same trails to do apples to apples comparison. And of course we've had like all kinds of snow since the last visit and lots more rain. So everything is way wetter, way softer and way more slippery. And I'm also like expecting to be on essentially a dirt bike at this point because I just put so much work in it swapping out the tires and the wheels. Yeah, some of the first trails we hit were quite a bit tighter and just like in first gear, I know you're not supposed to ride a motorcycle off road in first gear, but kind of had to because it's so slow. And these things come geared super tall from the factory. I do have a smaller counter shaft sprocket. I went from like, a, I went down one two from stock. If stock is 16, I went to 15. If stock was 15, I went to 14. I forget what, but that helped a ton. New tires, wow. Traction control makes it hard to tell how much is tire versus like trail or whatever. 
but I was able to make it up quite a bit more with this tire than I could with the old TKC80. Now, my TKC80 had 2,000 miles on it, so it's completely tuckered out, done, roasted, destroyed. So this is a brand new fresh tire, day one, and it still looks kind of sort of fresh. I think I can get probably 1,000 miles out of this back tire, which is decent. That's like probably six months of riding, realistically, like a dirt bike. So yeah. That definitely was nice, having that traction. When it comes to cornering and like slaloming in and out of single track turns, the narrower width front and rear does make it a lot easier to lean the bike over. And when it's leaned over, it feels better. There's one important thing about this type of motorcycle. So for cornering off-road, you're supposed to sit down into the turn, maybe pick a leg up, maybe not if you're like Tomac, and then sit down on the bike and either lean up if it's a flat turn or if there's a rut lean into it this thing with the seat you can't really sit down in it it has you kind of a funky spot you can't really wait the front of the bike when you sit down on it so i have a hard time just always standing up through the ruts on this thing and the weight is there's so much weight and the bias such a weird spot you can't really rail ruts like you can on a dirt bike on a dirt bike there's no better feeling than railing ruts in like a turn track on this it struggles in that wonderful opportunity of surfing through the dirt. But it can still get through the rutted corners comfortably, way better than like a more street oriented bike. So yeah, the narrower wheels and tires through those turns, definitely better than the prior setup. Having more knob helps a lot. This front tire is not a ton better than the TKC80. It is better. It's not a different world better. After we hit the slower, tighter trails, I wanted to go down this rocky chute that I was kind of nervous to go down last time. And some dudes were there and they were like, you got it, it's fine. And I did it. They were right. It was totally fine. So today, rode that section of trail a couple times, did a few laps up there. And yeah, having dirt bike tires through that helps a ton. I can slow the back end of the bike down way more. I have my off-road ABS on, so front end does have ABS, back and skid if you needed to. And yeah, it was in control and all that. I was still like using my little two thick legs to get myself upright because I get bumped in weird ways. It's still 500 pounds, top heavy and all that, but it could do it. And then on the faster sections of trail where you're getting that flow, that's where the difference between this and a real dirt bike is less obvious. And those were a super fun time. I have one moment popping into a left and it looks slippery. It was way more slippery than I thought. Um, I kind of Mario Karted it off the trail to a pile of logs, chest first into a big log, bent some fingers the wrong way. This one was already been bending funny before it's today. Luckily everything's okay. We decided to go down this trail that's rated Black Diamond. And I'm like, oh, it only loses 400 feet of elevation in a mile. That's not too crazy. Like we can get down that. Well, at first it's pretty mellow. Got to an old, a, a little, small little cotton would have fallen across the trail. So we cut it, pushed it aside. Yeah, I could probably go around it, but it's gonna be a cluster. And I think we could probably cut through it down there and it would fall and that might leave enough space to squeeze through and someone with a chainsaw could do it a second time. Woo! <laughs> that was a fun project. And then we're like, oh cool, we got black diamond trails today. And then we got to the bottom where it's just like mountain bike style dropping down to the trail. And I, we looked at it and I'm just like, holy, holy cow, guys, like this is not smart. I'm not riding a street bike down this multiple tiered obstacle of death. Let's do a little scouting. <laughs> That's terrifying, but I think I have a fair shot of getting down that. I just got to really get on the binders good through this. Oh my goodness. That's super gnarly. Okay. I think we'll be okay down that, but the trick is to stay in control down. Oh my gosh. That's like a mountain bike trail. Yeah. I would not hesitate on any of my dirt bikes or even my DRZ 400 to ride down this, but man, I don't want to just do it and not worry about it. This is officially the gnarliest thing I've ever ridden a street bike down. And then I pulled off the tail bag and the tank bag so I could move around and have a little less weight. It's just like a logical trick. But it worked, like rolling into the first bit. Holy cow, it was scary, but um, I just like slid right off these Rudy step downs. I couldn't slow down anymore, but it wasn't too fast. And then I was able to get back on the binders and then the rock section, I had traction, I had dirt bike tires, slithered right on through those. And then the very end is this kind of steeper rocky chute. You can't see it on the camera probably, but I think I caught third gear going down that, which felt amazing. Super safe, in control, very responsible, was not hairballed. 
and made it out. And oh my gosh, I remember going on that trail below that with the original oh tires gosh. and wheels a month ago and thinking like, I will never ride my 890 down that. And today with the dirt bike wheels and tires, I went right down it. So that was super cool. We met a local dude who works on the trails. His name's Joel. He is on a dirt bike set up with a chainsaw oh, yeah. rack and a shovel and all that. Yeah. He's trimming up some trees. Yeah, all oh, right. Nice. My name's Jeff. Joel. Nice to meet you, Joel. Good dude. We met Trevor, who's got a brand new 2023 KTM. I'm jealous. I wish I had a dirt bike. Yeah, that's a 23. That's nice. And yeah, this is a wonderful day on the trails. Thank you all for watching. Um, I'm stoked at what this thing can do. I'll take it on some more OHV Park stuff just because I miss dirt biking. I want a dirt bike. Thank you all for watching. Big thanks to W for getting me some help on these wheels here. I didn't quite pay full price, but still paid for them. Um, yeah, big thanks to Revzilla. Uh, they had the Rousey tires in stock. It's awesome. And yeah, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. If you like the moto comments, if you like the moto content, let me know with a comment down below. Hit the subscribe button. All my videos are kind of like this where we try to look at product stuff and then go have a fun time instead and then kind of wrap the two together. All right, time to get home. Peace out. I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.